last time on Boat Build. So what this is, is basically the water enters in and then it's flared out. And it's a tube. So what happens yeah, is it gives the boat some lift. This is Boat Build. Welcome back to Boat Build on the Drift. We're here at Coastal Boat Works in Timberton, Rhode Island, building our 30-foot picnic boat, as you know. And today we're going to talk a little design. I spent a little time on the internet grabbing some photos, looking at some designs of other picnic boats this size. And that makes a boat builder very nervous, doesn't it, Bill? Sometimes. Sometimes. Right. But it'll make you nervous. Last time we looked at the hull of your bass boat. Oh, of yeah. the ROS dash boat, nice which boat. is an interesting design. Today, let's look at the hull design of our 30 footer. Oh, this is how, a... How is it different? Well, it's a little bit different. The entry on this boat has more of a, more of puffed out, let's say. Okay, mm -hmm. so it makes the bow a little bit more buoyant. Okay. So we're after this bow to come up out of the water a little bit more. As you look down the hull, it, it starts to flatten out like an old sea, sea skiff style. Right. That's what we want. So it still has sort of these channels that we talked about on the last boat, but not as pronounced. It doesn't come out right. and roll over. This has a real pronounced reverse chine is what we call it. Okay. And that just knocks the water right down immediately. So water comes up, bang, down. Now tell me about where did this design originate? But the idea actually came from a 30-foot PT boat, which was designed by the Navy. No kidding. And we changed the reverse chine on it. Wow. So fascinating. It is. We changed and, and I'll tell you what. Yeah, she's getting Solid. strong. Yeah. Getting All right. Strong. Let's go to the uh, design shop. Okay. And last two here. And that should do. Holy shnikes, John. Yeah. What in the world you got? Spent a little time on the internet <laughs> looking at some photos. <laughs> My I, th God. I think I found some images here that uh, that'll fit the bill. So these are from a, a boat designer that does a 30 foot picnic boat. Right. Um, you know, we talked early on about colors. I saw this white, which is good. And I know you do, you do sort of a gray white. I do. On the ROS, that's good. But I've got to tell you, I still, can, you can't yeah. pull me away from Does, that blue. That, that, that dark color blue. really draws out the white, especially right. with the accent on the wood, which we're gonna do the same, so. So we'll do, we'll have a little bit of a, a, a bright work accent. We'll have the blue, and then what will we do down here? Will this be the black, or will the, the water line here be we'll gray? We'll do a nice two inch water line. Okay. Nice white two inch water line, and then go right into the bottom paint. All right, that's okay. great. So that decision we've made. Absolutely. So these we can put over here, right? Yep. The design below, I think is pretty much on this photo, okay? So we are, we're, not, we're not going to do a full mattress here, no. but what we'll do is we'll do the ability for a table there. So um, we could sleep through there, it converts to a table. We'll have a small head and then a very small kitchen area. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have something along these lines on the deck, right? So right. we're going to go with it. An outdoor kitchen. Pretty, Pretty much. I will be right, be right behind the helm chair, right where you drive. So we'll have... A, a microwave, we'll have a refrigerator out here, we'll have a sink. So I guess the question there is if we have that on the deck, do we really need that kind of a kitchen area below? What are your thoughts on that? No, what I think what I would do, because the boat, you gotta remember, the boat is only 10 foot six wide. So you're okay. only gonna fit so much in it. Mm -hmm. So I, I would go with a head. I would not go with a sink in the head. I now would here, take here's a head, so yep. just, just a basic head like this with a shower. Right, right exactly. A little bit of cabinetry over there to, mm -hmm. to store some stuff. But as you walk out, I would actually walk right into your sink so you could wash your hands. And that would act as a, maybe a small kitchenette area. So that's a very good point. So if we have a sink here in the kitchenette, a sink on the deck, you really don't need a sink in the head. No, it's not going to be functional. And you're going to want the room for showers. You're going to want to put your, t your cloths down to right. wash out the soaps and stuff. And you don't want to have right. that in the way. I'll check with my wife before we make that decision. Oh, please do. I don't want to get yelled at. All right, you won't get yelled at, Bill. So anyways, this is sort of the design we want to do for our V-Bird. Right? Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's exactly what we want. So cushions fill in for sleep. You pull them out. If you need a place to go below and eat, you'll have that. Right. We'll have one table that I figure will move to three locations. Right. So we'll have a table below, 
we'll have a table above in our half round, mm -hmm. and then we'll have a table, a place for the table to go aft. Right. Depending on. I where think we what I would it. change out of this picture, noticing the table is is the pedestal. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to go with a nice flush on the deck. That way, when somebody goes to walk in it, they won't have anything to stub their toe on. Makes sense. And then we'll do the same in the other two locations. Now, to to some of our bright work and woodworking below. I like this design. So what they've done is we're going to have all of our polished fiberglass below. Right. And they've just taken some, this looks like this could be teak or mahogany accent panels mm -hmm. and brought them in. So it gives you that real down east fishing boat feel, but it's not all wood and dark. It's still bright. Right. The bright, the bright work looks very good, but I think like right in here, this, this should be able to open up for some storage. Because you're going to be laying down on the V-berth and you might want to store some books or some games or something like that. So there'll be space back in here. Right. I think over here we should put the TV, definitely, and okay. have it fold out. Sure. That way when you're laying down you can watch a little TV if you happen to be at the dock. And we'll want to, we'll, we'll probably do, you know, I'm a TV guy, obviously. Oh, absolutely. So we'll, we'll probably do a TV up on the deck as well. This is, a, this is a different manufacturer's deck. They've got the half round there. Ours won't be as big, but this is the basic idea. And we won't have the room for another, for sort of a co-pilot chair there either. No, we, we want our wraparound seat to, to butt right up against that bulkhead. That way when somebody's sitting there, they can lean up against the bulkhead. And you possibly might want to put a TV up here on the dashboard, and somebody can lay down and watch it. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and we'll, so we'll have a we'll have a canvas enclosure, mm -hmm. so this will be living space as well and sleeping space. Oh, absolutely. And if you decide you want to put a full enclosed backing on it, we can still do that afterwards. So, Bill, let's talk headroom. I'm a six footer, right? But I I'd like to not have to duck below. Exactly. What what's your plan for that? Well, what we're gonna do is. If you look on this picture, th this on the outside of the boat represents the gunnel where you walk. Mm -hmm. This portion is called the trunk. So we're going to raise the trunk. We've already prepped it so that we can raise ours to accommodate for a taller headspace, maybe six foot four. And that also will allow us for a little bit more foot room. Mm -hmm. And that's what, we're gonna, that's what we're trying to achieve. If you want, we'll take you over to the 30. I can show you the actual beginning of it, which very rarely anybody gets to see. Love to see it. Absolutely. Let's go. All right. Go. Bill, it looks like you've been working the jigsaw a little bit. Yep, we absolutely have been. So what's going to happen here? So am I standing about where the floor will be? Uh, no, actually the floor is going to be probably down here. Oh, OK. All right. So we've got some pretty good headroom right now, but if you sight it, we're about here, so we need to come up to about here. So this will be rounded, like when I said I love that design on the bass boat, this is going to have that same kind of round and tilted back design a little bit, right? Yep, yep. we're going to take the trunk, we're going to rake it back, and we're going to come up about, about, about eight, eight to ten inches, something like that, maybe. So right about here, I would be where? So we would have the gear locker and you know the windlass is gonna be up here, so we'll have the anchor chain locker right. forward. And then where is this about where the beaver is? Yeah, we'll be standing probably right on top of the beaver. Okay. And that will be coming back, you know, probably a good uh, almost eight feet from the bow. Alright, so then where so our kitchen area right now is about there and the head's about here. Exactly. Okay. You're still so, gonna have a hell of a deck space. Right, we'll have plenty of room for your uh, amenities of seating and such. So, a next step here would be to start to form this. Right. So, okay. I took our original top sides and I cut, I cut the curve already. Mm -hmm. And we're actually making the panel now and we're going to screw the panel in. Okay. All the way around. We're not going to worry about how long it is right now. We're just going to get this curve. This more, the most important part of this is what will make the trunk look really well. And there's a little bit of, this is just, you know, again, hand laying, right? This right. is kind of a feel. You've got a feel and a knack for how this is going to come in, how the curve's going to work, right. how it's going to, this isn't coming out of a press or a mold. No, no, the, we, have, we have an old saying, there's nothing straight in a boat. Right. So we can't really measure much. So everything's done by eye. You really have to know what you're looking for and why you're looking for. And when it's in the water anyways, right? Right. 
like the other saying, you can't see both sides of the boat at the same time. So <laughs> That's a boat building saying. <laughs> That's right. All right, so we're back here a couple of episodes ago. We talked about stringers. Right. And it looks like we're at the process of measuring the stringers down here now. Yes. Right now, he's measuring out to the length of the stringer. We know what the curve is from the template. We just want to make it a little bit longer. So he's getting that measurement now, and then we're going to jump down and stop making out that stringer. Before I use the head here, <laughs> what, head? what do you have for it? I got a 13 that we're still working on. It was in the last episode. I want to show you where we are with the seating and such, and show you how we how we build all that. All right, we'll be back. Okay, let's go. Next time on Boat Build. Bill, this has come a long way. It has. I just wanted to take a moment to show everybody a little bit about what we do. This is the 13 you seen it when it got popped out. Uh, now these are, the, these are the corner caps. These, this is what we use to attach the cleats on. But take those away real quick. And you can see I put it in the transom. This is Boat Build, right here at The Drift. Presented by Sociable, original social media programming. Thanks for watching. Keep it right here to watch more episodes of Boat Build, only on The Drift. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Get The Drift?